Lately, I've been having a great time designing rope and ladder cables. The orange version in the foreground was done on a mid-gauge hobby machine, and I'm going to show you how to arrange for that pattern today. I'll just demonstrate the knitting and cabling process. Um, sizing it and turning it into a pillow is, of course, really easy because it's just a square. But I will put a pattern into written form and offer it to Country Knitting of Maine News and Views for those of you who prefer to have it all written down. For bulky machines that do have rivers, I've also made this pattern, and that's a separate video. The green pillow is loom knitted, and there is a video of that too, so those of you who also loom knit can enjoy it. Here's an overview of how the pattern works. This is the center of the design, two knit stitches. Left and right, the design is mirrored. So at the center of the design are two knit stitches. To the left and right of each cable are two columns of tucked purl stitches. So we hand manipulate to get those. Each cable consists of six knit stitches side by side and the cable crosses are made every eight rows. So those we just let the machine knit and stop and cross them every eight rows. Each ladder is outlined with a single column of plain knit stitches. So those we just let the machine take care of. Towards the edge of the design is a single column of tucked purl stitches that we hand manipulate. And all the stitches beyond that column are knits. This is all pretty easy actually. The most laborious segment is the double garter stitch because every four rows we have to stop, undo two rows and reform them as purls. There are 48 stitches in total. So counting from the left, stitch eight, 15, 16, and 23 are all reformed as tucked purl stitches. 10 to 13 are double garter stitch, 17 to 22 are the cable. 24 is the last knit stitch in the first half. And now the pattern starts to repeat in a mirrored fashion. Still counting from the left, stitch 25 is the other central knit stitch. 26 is a tucked purl column. 27 to 32 are the cable stitches crossed every eight rows. 33 and four are tucked purls. 36 to 39 are double garter stitch. 41 is a tucked purl column. And the last seven stitches, 42 to eight, are knits. While we're knitting, we stop and do some hand manipulating every four rows. Four rows having been knitted, we count over to stitch eight. Find the last time that it was reformed and reform the next four rows. We're making knit stitches into purl stitches, but tucking at the same time. So slide the tool behind the first rung on the ladder, grab the second and pull it through and repeat. And now that column has become a tucked purl column. Now count over to the stitches that are for the double garter stitch. That's skipping one for the knit stitch and then the next four double garter. Drop the last two rows that knitted and reform each row this time as a purl stitch. That will create our double garter section. Do this for the next four stitches. We already did one, so there are three more to go. Second one done, here comes the third and the fourth. So this segment of double garter stitch is now complete. Count over, drop and ladder down column 15 for the last row, four rows and reform it as a tucked purl stitch and do the same with column 16. Where we have two columns of tucked purls together, it can get a little bit confusing about which strand of yarn to pick up. I like to do what you're seeing. I'm going behind the one that looks shorter, kind of wrapping around and picking up the one that looks longer. In all honesty, I don't think it makes a tremendous amount of difference which one that you pick up, but it does make quite a difference 
that you be consistent because it creates a different texture when the fabric is viewed from the front. The reason for the confusion is that we've made sort of a crisscross out of our ladder by tuck purling the first column. So on one side, one strand of yarn seems to be above, and on the other side, the other strand seems to be above, and you have to make a choice. But now we've moved on, skipped the cable stitches, and turn column 23 into a tucked purl. 24 and 5 need no treatment. 26 is a tucked purl column. 27 to 32 need no treatment. They'll eventually be cable. Columns 33 and 34 become tucked purl columns. 35 is left alone. It's one of the stitches that outlines the ladder. 36, 37, 38 and 39 are all reformed for two rows only as purls. To get double garter stitch, which is two knit rows followed by two purl rows, we do need that alternation. So we leave the first two of four rows as the machine knitted it and only drop and reform the second two of the four rows that were knitted. Column 40 is left alone. It's one of the knits that outlines the ladder. Column 41 is reformed as tucked purl stitches and the row is complete. Knit four rows. Repeat everything that we did the last time we knitted four rows that you just saw me do. And this row we will also cross the two cables. Use a pair of three prong tools. Lift up the six stitches on those tools. Place the three stitches that were originally on the right, on the left three needles. The three stitches that were on the left three needles, on the right three needles, and proceed. The next row can be a lot easier to knit if you tell the carriage to knit these needles back from hold. In doing that, you've performed half of the work that's required. What if you forget one of the cable crosses? I did, so I thought I'd show you how to save the day. I was nearly finished with the pillow at this point and not inclined to go back and do the whole thing over. So what I did instead was take the six cable stitches and ravel them only back four rows. Then it was perfectly easy to cross the cable. Now all we need to do is manually knit the six stitches with every row of its yarn in order. And that's the only tricky thing about it. Manually forming stitches is not difficult. We just have to make sure that we pick up the yarns in the right order and it can get a little confusing to look at. But obviously the bottom one goes first, then sort, look for the next lowest one and reform the stitches by laying the yarn in the needle hooks and pulling them back one at a time. You'll see me push on the needle butts as soon as I've gotten them all done. There we go. That tends to even out the stitches. At first, when you are feeling around and making your stitches by hand, you may not feel very confident that you're getting them the same size, and that action will tend to even them out. Actually, with a little bit of practice, you can make stitches nearly as even as the machine does first try, but it's still a good idea to make sure they get evened out. And voila, the mistake is erased. If you love cables as much as I do, you may want to read more about twisted rope cables and hand-knitted looking textures in my book, Mostly Classic Cables. So I will put a link to where the book is sold in the program notes. Three stitch over three stitch twisted rope cables are included as well as other sizes of twisted rope cables. But this exact stitch combination is not there because it's something I just developed recently. It will eventually appear in Country Knitting of Maine News and Views, though. In the meantime, enjoy the video and try some experiments.